Welcome to video five of the series of introductory videos for Salt Lake Camp. This video's topic will be on the pocket toolpath. Um, so what we're looking at right now is a uh, part that I've already set up. If you'd like to see how to set up a part, uh, I will reference you to uh, video three. So let's begin. So we will go to add milling operation, pocket, the workflow on the left side is the same for all our toolpaths. We're going to begin by choosing geometry. I'm going to start with this top step, this top internal pocket. I'm just going to choose the edge there. Uh, new to SolidCam 2016 is we've actually renamed some of the options on the side here. They work almost the exact same way, uh, just one additional feature. So um, <clears throat> whereas you used to use auto constant Z, right now we call it constant Z propagation. And it works the same way as before. Once I click that box, it finds the rest of that chain in that pocket. In addition to that, if you zoom in just a little bit, you can see now that it also uh, projects it onto the working plane. So if we were to do something deep in the pocket, or if we were to do uh, contours um, that go up and down in the Z direction, any kind of curvature, it'll project the actual profile geometry onto the working plane so we can get an idea of what the pocket is going to look like. Uh, in addition to that, we actually have now tangent propagation, which works um, in a similar way to the to the uh, constant z, but rather than looking for a constant z association, it's looking for any kind of tangency between the edges, and uh, we'll see that in a in a future video. So this is a single chain for this pocket. I'm just going to click the green check mark to accept that geometry. Let's select the tool from my list. In this case, I'm going to choose my one inch flat end mill levels. Again, the levels can be either found by using a point or a face, which I'm doing for the lower level of the pockets. We're just going to do that first pocket there. Under technology, we're going to give it our depth of cut. In this case, it's a half inch, so I'm going to put, uh, sorry, it's a one inch diameter end mill, so put about half inch for my uh, maximum depth, depth of cut. Under technology is where we're going to see where we have a little bit more control over this toolpath. Here we are with the wall offset. I'll put it as 100, uh, 10 thou, 10 thou. Island offset. Again, 10 thou, and floor offset, let's leave some 10 thou behind for finishing as well. Under technology, we have the usual types, the hatch and the contour. With this sort of pocket, and in general, I usually use contour because it does leave a nicer looking profile. The second tab on this window will always be referencing that geometry. So in this case, I chose contour. Let's go to the contour. For that inside pocket, I can choose to start from the inside or the outside, if that's even possible. In this case, it's a closed pocket, so we'll leave it at inside. At the corners of the pockets, either I can let it do a complete 90 degree turn, or I can add a fillet at each corner so it actually smooths out the transition. And then there is the radius it'll use at those corners. If I wanted to change it to loop or sharp, you'll see that it does a little something different at those corners, and that is just to eliminate any kind of cusp that might be left behind when you do a, um, a 90 degree turn with a, um, a regular end mill. Okay, and then under link is the ramping options. In this case, I'll leave it as none, and that means it'll just plunge into the part. So let's take a look at what that toolpath looks like. Okay, <clears throat> so if we take a look at that from the top view, there is my step over that I put in under my technology section. You can see that it's contouring out, starting from the middle and just spiraling out to there. So that is just a standard pocketing operation. Now, if, if I wanted to use the same tool for the other pockets in this, in this tool, um, in this part, say this lower pocket here, I could start a new operation just by going add milling operation and choosing it again. Or if I wanted to save a lot of the features, a lot of the parameters I entered in here, Let's say the, the the overlap percentage I put in here, the wall offsets, all the information here, even the levels, if I wanted to save that. Everything here can be saved by doing a save and copy. And the thing that I'm going to change here is the geometry itself, because I want to do a different pocket. I'm going to do this inside pocket. And again, we'll use the constant Z propagation to find the rest of the pocket. And again, it projected it onto the working plane. But this lower pocket, not only is it the outside edge here, but there's an inside edge. I want to make sure I don't totally move out, uh, eliminate that entire pocket there, that entire feature there. So I'm going to choose that as one of my chains as well. And again, with the auto constant Z 
or in this case, the constant Z propagation still selected, it found the rest of the pocket for me. So with multiple chains, two or more, I'm basically telling SolidCam, I'd like to mill out everything in between those chains. So it'll stay outside of this center chain and machine only what's inside that uh, intermittent area. Because it is save and copy, it's the same tool. I'm gonna change the levels because I already milled down to that pocket, so that'll now be my upper level, and my pocket depth is now that bottom right there. Okay, again, we'll keep that there. Now, not that that matters because that max step down is actually larger than the pocket depth, so it's gonna do this in one shot. Technology kept that the same. So if we do a save and calculate on this, we're using the same tool, so there's minimal tool changes on the, on the left side here, and all I did was change the geometry and the levels, and now I have a toolpath that machines that inside area. Okay, once again, I wanna save the same tool, use the same tool, so I'm just gonna go save and copy again, and this time I'm gonna go back to geometry and reselect more geometry. This time we're gonna do the outside of the part. And we're gonna use multiple chains as well. So we can do only areas between that edge, the outside edge of the stock, and this edge, the outside edge of the pocket. Now the thing is though, because I'm telling SolidCam I'd like it to machine the material in between those two pockets, this one inch tool will not fit in that space. But in reality, this is the outside edge of the stock. Outside that line is air. So I'd like to tell SolidCam that it could actually cross those lines. And that's when we set it to open. So if I right click the first chain, mark chain as open, it actually converts it to a green color indicating that that's open now. It means that the tool can cross those lines. Usually when you do multiple chains, you always wanna chain from the outside in. So the stock boundary and then the part boundary. And that's what I've done here. Okay, so if I just go back, let's change my levels. So once again, I'm doing the top of the part. Let's say to the bottom of the part there. Save and calculate. Because I told it that it's open, it actually is repositioning and cutting across that line. It's crossing that line. So all the outside material has been removed. <clears throat> now, interesting thing for uh, SolidCam 2016 is that in addition to the stock definition, the target definition, we actually have now a little tab area here with the updated stock. And if I just right click and calculate, that'll show me the actual updated stock, meaning that this is the result of those three toolpaths. And if we take a top view of that, we'll notice something here. Each of those toolpaths, they're not actually completing the, the, the machining. You can see that there's a little bit of a, um, a crescent there, a little bit more material there. That's because the one inch tool cannot fit in that corner. It actually is too large to go into those fillets. And if we just click on that, we'll see that that fillet is actually 265. So the, the tool is too big. So rather than going in there and creating sketches and creating geometries so that I can only do that pocket, I'm actually gonna just take the operation that is responsible for doing that, which is that one. I can either do a save and copy like you just saw me do, or I can just go right click, copy, right click, paste, and make a copy of it at the end of the list. Let's open that up. So we're gonna use the same geometry. We're just gonna change the size of the tool. So in this case, I'm gonna go with a half inch tool. This will definitely fit in that corner. Levels are the same. In this case, I might change my depth of cut because it's a smaller tool. Under technology, I'll still leave the, uh, the wall and the floor offset, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually engage this right here, the rest material. And that opens up a new third tab where I can basically tell it the previous tool diameter, in this case, a one inch, previous wall offset, so in this case, 10 thou. That is to represent the machining done by that first pocketing operation. With the rest operation, it's only gonna focus on the areas that were not done by that previous tool. So when I do save and calculate, We'll see now that we have a toolpath that's focusing only on those corners. So that's your rest milling operation. Okay. And if we take a look at that in Solid Verify, we'll see how that works. Okay. So that is the pocketing toolpath. If you have any other questions, you can always give us a call at the main text for line at 1 866 975 1115 extension 2. 
or you can watch the rest of the videos in this series of introductory videos to see the other toolpaths. Thank you for watching.